Okay, welcome to the channel, viewers. We're going to turn to quickly to Matthew 27, where I can do a comparison of what Jesus suffered and the spirit that Donald Trump is up against. Matthew 27, verse 11. Jesus is being put on trial uh, and they're trying to crucify him, the religious people of his day. Just like the political people of Donald Trump's day are trying to put him away so they don't lose control of the benefits that come as being high in the political sector. And so meanwhile, Jesus stood before the governor who questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? Are you who you say you are, basically? And Jesus said, you have said so. And when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he gave no answer. At this point, there was no point in giving an answer. Just like at this point in the presidential race, it's no point Donald Trump having a debate with Kamala Harris, given that both debates were biased and partial against Trump towards Harris. And when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he gave no answer. Then Pilate asked him, Do you not hear how many charges they are bringing against you? And Jesus gave no answer, not even to a single charge, much to the government, governor's amazement. Now while, now it was the governor's custom at the feast to release to the crowd a prisoner of their choosing. At that time they were holding a notorious prisoner named Barabbas. So when they, when the crowd had assembled, Pilate asked them, which one do you want me to release to you? Barabbas or Jesus who is called the Christ? For he knew it was out of envy that they had handed Jesus over to him. While Pilate was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent him this message. Have nothing to do with this innocent man, for I have suffered terribly in a dream today because of him. But the chief priests and elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus put to death. So which of the two do you want me to release to you? Asked the governor. Barabbas? They replied, release to us Barabbas. Now this is, view as the way the sinful nature works. It's destructive. And it goes with the masses. What then should I do with Jesus who is called Christ? Pilate asked. And they all answered, crucify him. Um, I was pushed uh, by an elderly woman. Um, we were heckled at. We were cursed at. Um, we were mocked. The Kamala Harris campaign has yet to apologize or even address the situation between Grant and Luke, the two gentlemen who yelled out Jesus is king. And we have their interview, by the way. We will go look at the highlights with that. But still, the silence is deafening. I mean, go fact check this yourself. As you type in Jesus is Lord, Kamala rally, you would expect there's news articles everywhere. There's literally nothing. Only Fox News seems to be the only major publication talking about this. And exactly what I thought would happen and really predicted in my last video, you had these random publications saying, Kamala Harris, Antichrist, bizarre claim surface after Wisconsin rally. As you sift through the one and two articles like this, they will say, well, there's no real verification that this video is true or try to dismiss the authenticity of this video. However, even before the two gentlemen whose interview we're about to watch told their side of the story, we actually did have a third independent video going just as viral as this event, so everyone was very comfortable to include myself to verify the legitimacy of this story. Uh, I want to bring up this is our first time taking an interview with anybody and I think it's important because this is our 
raw, like untold story. There's a lot happened that a lot that happened off camera uh, that we said at the protest and or well while we were protesting. And I guess we could start off with when she after she talked about overturning Roe v. Wade and Donald Trump. I yelled out to the crowd that abortion is the sacrament of Satan. And when I said that, I deeply do believe that as a Christian. And about 10 seconds go by, and that's when the video of uh, my friend Grant and I uh, proclaiming that Christ is Lord and Jesus is King uh, when we said that. Okay, so this is very important because I do think that eventually Kamala Harris will be bullied into a corner into which she will have to respond to all of this. So make sure you understand, if you do watch this video, this is the first time these two gentlemen are actually talking about what's happening. And when you have these random articles like this saying, we can't verify anything or we don't really know what's happened, I actually think this is quite the testimony to the two gentlemen who went there to protest. They weren't even trying to publicize themselves. They weren't trying to make TikToks. They weren't trying to make YouTube videos, all of the mass promotion really came from people like myself, from a bunch of TikTok creators, from Fox News. They are not looking for any fame and glory. They were simply just trying to protest and project the name of Christ in the middle of this rally, which they do have the right to. And I think it's important to say this is a small venue and we we're about 20 to 30 yards away from Kamala at this point. There's a lot of controversy that says she wasn't talking to us or we laughed we didn't get kicked out well i can speak on grant and i's behalf um on video grant's getting pushed and shoved and um there's about five seconds after or, or before she tells us to go to the smaller rally down the street you can see on the video she waves she waves she was actually waving to me i uh, took this cross off my neck that i wear and as we were getting asked to leave um, I held it up in the air and waved at her and pointed to her and she looked directly in the eye, kind of gave me an evil smirk. Okay, so I never really understood why this was so important as to why Kamala said, ha, go to the smaller rally down the road. But now that I really think about it, when I meditate on this, you need to understand this is just another lie from the Kamala party to make fun of smaller rallies, to show how big and great her rallies are. But again, even from the third party sources and from the main sources themselves who got kicked out, they are even stating this rally only had about 25 to 2,700 people. We go to this university. It was in our gymnasium. This was not a big rally to begin with. So again, this is just another attempt to try and make herself look amazing and great. And again, if you are a Christian, you know that pride and ego is one of the worst sins, if not the worst sin as proclaimed in the Bible attendees there volunteers that kicked us out with press with badges or whatever they had and i specifically remember this one man saying you were uninvited and unwelcome to this event you need to leave and all they did was walk us out the door they didn't tell us why no cops escorted us out uh no secret service and uh yeah that's our story Again, this is super relevant to the story because maybe for the first time ever, the Christian has the ability to actually tell their side of the story and their narrative before it gets all twisted. Again, I'm actually really surprised and I waited some time to give the Kamala Harris campaign literally time to respond to all of this and maybe give her a chance to say, I am sorry, because we are to forgive. Not only say I am sorry, but maybe I was even gonna give her the benefit of the doubt of, I couldn't hear him, I apologize. But still, like I stated, before the silence is deafening and there's absolutely nothing from their party or really any other mainstream media um, who's more left-leaning if you will The, the whole thing here is spiritual. They asked, um, when asked what they wanted to do with Christ, they said, crucify him. And Pilate said, why? What evil has he done? And this is what the world and a lot of Americans are asking. What evil really has Donald Trump done that would be um, not beneficial to the American um, budget and all the policies that need to be changed, the border, the, the anti-abortion laws and all this other stuff. He has done nothing. They're attacking him 
for things that have happened in his life and not one charge has been laid against him. So in a lot of ways, the government's no different to Pilate. They're asking in a lot of ways, why? When Pilate saw that he was accomplishing nothing, but that instead a riot was breaking out. And this is why I showed that Kamala Harris kicking Christians out. The crowd will just follow in the um, hyper euthoria of it all, whether it's good or evil, the crowd will follow. Like when the pigs, Jesus cast the demon, demons out of the man and into the pigs, and the pigs all ran off the cliff and drowned in the water. The crowds just follow. You've got to understand that. And um, But instead of a riot breaking out, he took water and washed his hands before the crowd. I am innocent of this man's blood, he said. You bear the responsibility. This is where Kamala Harris is up to. This is what she's got to offer the American people. This is about the top of it. We have breaking news. Vice President Harris is speaking at the residence before she participates in a CNN town hall tonight in Chester Township. Let's listen. He said he wanted generals like Adolf Hitler had. Donald Trump said that because he does not want a military. You have to understand how infantile this is. She's not talking about policies. She's not talking about how she's going to benefit America. She's just trying to have Donald Trump vandalized, character assassinated. Anybody with some common sense and sanity would know that Donald Trump doesn't want to be like Hitler and all this rubbish, but you listen to the, the desperation in this address. It's completely demonized. She's lost her way. She has nothing to offer the, offer the American people. She's proven that over the last three and a half years. She said that she'll do everything and wouldn't change anything that Joe Biden has done and that she has been a major part in all the critical decisions, and that includes those that have undermined America. And this is all she's got, viewers. This is all she's got to offer the American people. That is loyal to the United States Constitution. He wants a military that is loyal to him. He wants a military who will be loyal to him personally. One that will... This is the funny part about this woman. When Donald Trump was the president, there wasn't a single war in the world. Now, you've got to understand what that means. On the one hand, it means peace. But on the other hand, it means Deep State and all these people that benefit from war are losing billions of dollars. Okay, there's people out there that want war. They want people to be killed and weapons to be fired because they make billions of dollars out of it. This is why Donald Trump was not a benefit to... um, His good was not a benefit for evil. And... The evil doesn't want him to get back in because if he stops the wars, they lose billions upon billions of dollars in profit. This woman's not representing America. I think she's got the agenda. She has a a proven track record is a abysmal failure before the world. And if this is the best, as a matter of fact, To me, I don't even think this has got anything to do with the election. This is a personal attack, representative of Deep State and those behind the scenes that do not want Donald Trump's independency to come in to um, power. It's not representing who he is at all. And to me, it's very infantile and very evil obey his orders even when he tells them to break the law or abandon their oath to the Constitution of the United States. Now I've done a bit of homework on what Kamala Harris is saying about the military but you've got to understand this is a woman that has wanted uh, tens of millions of people to come through across the borders and when you think about Donald Trump and the military 
Trump aims to expand domestic military use if re-elected. Well, how? This is the whole thing, guys. This is what they're not telling you. During his first term as president, Donald Trump tested the limits of how he could use the military to achieve policy goals. If given a second term, the Republican and his allies are preparing to go much further, much further, reimagining the military as an all-powerful tool to deploy on U.S. soil. Let's get it right. He has pledged to recall thousands of American troops from overseas and station them at the U.S. border with Mexico. There you go. Kamala Harris doesn't want that. She wants these people to keep flooding into the states. He has explored U.S. troops for domestic policy priorities such as deportations. I don't know how he's ever going to undo tens of millions of people to get them out. And confronting civilian unrest, civil unrest. He has talked of weeding out military officers who are ideologically opposed to him. That's fair enough. Trump's vision amounts to a potentially dramatic shift in the role of the military in the U.S. society, carrying grave implications for both the country's place in the world. No, see, now this is where it all goes bad. If Trump's protecting the border by using the military, there's nothing wrong with that. If Trump's making sure that he has leaders that are going to work in unison with his vision, I can't see any problem with that. Um, this is this is nonsense, this bit here, and the restraints that have traditionally been placed on domestic use of the military. This is not the military being used against the United, people of the United States. This is the military being domestically used to get the United States back in order. And if people want to do bad and they and and the use of the military is necessary, then what's up with that? As Trump's campaign heads into its final stretch against Democratic Vice President Kamala Harris, he is promising forceful action against immigrants who do not have permanent legal status um, and etc. He said, I will rescue Aurora and every town that has been invaded and conquered, Trump said at the rally. And, you know, it's easy for us. We're not living in those towns, although, you know, Australia is a multicultural country and I've watched the diversity um, uh, get bigger since a young young bloke. Um, but I can't see anything uh, anywhere, anything near the way Kamala Harris is portraying um, what pro- Donald Trump's plans are for the benefit of America and for good against evil. This isn't about a. Poli- if this is the way politics has gone, trying to win by not only character assassination but assassination attempts. Three, in fact, <clears throat> something is seriously wrong within um, the leadership of not only the USA but nations that are allowing this to happen. You shouldn't see. When you're going, when you're trying to get a job, can you imagine turning up for a job and you're sitting with the um, CEO and you start attacking the, the the CEO's assistant? You're just sitting there attacking the CEO's assistant to try and get the job instead of presenting what your quali- qualifications are and your qualities are and what your assets are. She has no assets. She's shown her assets over the last three and a half years and she said she won't change them. She's just a puppet for the people that are benefiting from all this evil that's going on in the United States that Harris and Biden or Biden and Harris have allowed. This is not about politics. This is about saving the benefits of a position that they are unable to um, use for the benefit of the United States. In just the past week, Donald Trump has repeatedly called his fellow Americans the enemy from within. Donald Trump has not done that, viewers, and 
there is a panic going on within the Democratic Party because they have weaponized the government. Okay, they're, they're trying to vandalize and assassinate the character of Donald Trump in however they can at the lowest of levels, the most demonic and demonized dark levels of lies and deception and deceit so that they don't lose the benefits of their position because they really haven't done anything for the American people. Let me just play this for you. I'm just going random. What here. are you expecting? Joe Biden said he doesn't think it's going to be a peaceful election day. Well, he doesn't have any idea what's happening in North Carolina as he spends most of his day sleeping. Uh, I think the bigger problem is the enemy from within, not even the people that have come in and destroying our country, by the way, totally destroying our country. The towns, the villages, they're being inundated. But I don't think they're the problem in terms of election day. I think the bigger problem are the people from within. We have some very bad people. We have some sick people, radical left lunatics. And I think they're the and, and it should be very easily handled by, if necessary, by National Guard or if really necessary by the military, uh, they, because they can't let that happen. How are you going to guard against uh, the bureaucrats undermining you? Well, they're going to undermine. Term? Well, I always say so. We have two enemies. We have the outside enemy and then we have the enemy from within. And the enemy from within, in my opinion, is more dangerous than China, Russia, and all these countries, because if you have a smart president, he can handle them pretty easily. I handled, I got along great with all of them. I handled them. So unlike what Kamala Harris is saying, the en enemy from within is not the people. The enemy from within is the the government and people within the government that have the authority that have weaponized the government to maintain um, their position and their profit that comes with that because they, again they have not benefited the American people. This rhetoric that Donald Trump is against his own people is so evil and so bad and even said that he would use the United States military to go after yeah. American citizens. And let's be clear about who he considers to be the enemy from within. Anyone who refuses to bend a knee or dares to criticize him would qualify in his mind as the enemy within. That's an extraordinary and severe, desperate, deceitful, diabolical lie. The desperation and signs of defeat from these um, last ditch efforts to ruin Donald Trump are probably some of the most evil forms of political um, strategy that, that I've ever seen and I'm not even into politics but from a Christian ministerial perspective perspective I've never seen anybody try to win any sort of thing le illegitimately like this at such a high level in front of the world because most of the world knows this isn't true like judges like journalists like nonpartisan election officials it is deeply troubling and incredibly dangerous it is deeply troubling and incredibly dangerous because these are the people and all their evil that are going to be on the end of it. Donald Trump will not tolerate um, the evil. He just won't. And this is what they're afraid of. They are desperately afraid. Um, it's getting to the point where Donald Trump's not safe. I don't think that I think there's every chance that there could be another assassination, proper assassination attempt against Donald Trump. They do not want him in, in as president. They've, they've got too much to lose. All their disingenuousness and corruption and evil that they've done is going to come back to bite them and they're petrified. That Donald Trump would invoke Adolf Hitler, the man who is responsible for the deaths of six million Jews. I don't know who's writing these scripts for her, but how pathetic is it? It's so pathetic and desperate. And to me, it's destroying her campaign, not 
not fixing it because it's in a, it's it's so far away and so fetched so far away from reality and so far fetched it's not believable and hundreds of thousands of Americans all of this is further evidence for the American people of who Donald Trump really is this is a window into who this is not evidence it's an opinion and it's a very warped and twisted opinion this is a very desperate woman. This woman will throw anybody under the bus, whether they're good or bad, to get what she wants. And this is, this is showing all of us, and most of all the American people, what the capabilities of this woman are if she gets in as president. If she turns, it will be ugly. If she really gets nasty, she'll turn on anyone. Because Donald Trump, Trump has really done no no evil to, or any of this at all. Donald Trump really is. From the people who know him best, from the people who worked with him side by side in the Oval Office and in the Situation Room. Okay, this is becoming a scratch record. The people that she's talking about were the people that didn't carry out their jobs well enough and Donald Trump fired them. Well, you know, people have got a... I've had this with bricklayers. People have got a funny way of um, getting their nose severely out of joint. You'll see this in, in religion a lot too. Um, and they just uh, run smear campaigns against people that really didn't do them any harm at all. And it is clear from John Kelly's words that Donald Trump is someone who I quote, certainly falls into the general definition of fascist who in fact vowed to be a dictator on day one and vowed to use the military as his personal militia to carry out his personal and political vendettas. This is... Anybody with half a brain can tell that this is a desperate, um, agenda-driven speech written by somebody that needs to be fired. Um not to benefit the Americans uh, relative to policy and government, but to undermine the potential of, the de of these people losing their position in the presidency and Donald Trump coming in to turn this all around. I just said he's going to use, we read it before, the military for the border and for the benefit of um, trying to get all these... Can you imagine trying to get out a million illegal immigrants, let alone 10 to 20 million? I don't know how he's going to do it. Um, I, as a matter of fact, I, I think Donald Trump becomes president. I don't think it's going to end well for him because the mess is too big. It's a very bad mess over there. Uh, but this is so demonised and demonic. Um, it's, it's just so bad. It's so untrue. It's so diabolical. Donald Trump is increasingly unhinged and unstable. Now, she should be standing there saying, I'm sorry, but President Biden, uh, I'm sorry I lied to you, but this is... See, she's... <laughs> if, when, when Donald Trump wins, and I hope he wins, or if he wins, all this is going to come out how she knew that Joe Biden wasn't fit to be president. She misled the American people for the whole term of his presidency. She reckons she's got the um, authority and um, psych psych psychological and maybe psychiatry to be able to term and Donald Trump's fitness. While we've been watching him campaign non-stop, she had a day's rest. <coughs> and criticised him of not being able to um, keep up. Really, what you're watching here is projection. She is projecting, right? It's gotten so bad and they're so uh, self-unaware. They think people are blind. She's projecting what is the actual state of the, these people themselves. What she's saying about Donald Trump, viewers, and, and I'll, take this, I'll take responsibility for this, is probably what she's going to end up being. And in a second term, people like John Kelly would not be there to be the guardrails against his propensities and his actions. 
those who once tried to stop him from pursuing his worst impulses would no longer be there and no longer be there to rein him in. So the well, viewers, this goes for her as well. I think she's way more dangerous than Donald Trump. She's proven that. Um, she's far left fanatical. She um, will have children and getting chopped up to change their gender identities and all this other stuff. If you look at her policies, there'll be babies that have been born, uh, terminated, uh, without any, you know, specific or honest reason for it, just out of convenience. The borders, the people who keep flooding into the border. There's not much more damage that this woman can do. The cost of groceries are <laughs> well out of reach. Bottom line is this. We know what Donald Trump wants. He wants unchecked power. The no. <clears throat> Donald Trump wants what's best for the American people, and he's proven it over and over again. But like the Lord Jesus Christ, he's up against very serious, relentless, uh, brilliantly evil foes. And I'm sad to say it, but unfortunately, this woman has proven that she is one of them. Because this kind of rhetoric um, proves it. The question in 13 days will be, what do the American people want? Thank you. Well, you know what, viewers? I don't think they're going to want Kamala. I had to play this because um, I've, I've never heard such horrible rhetoric as a means of trying to win a presidential race. My personal opinion is that is not the way to go about winning an election. You have to, like applying for a job, present what you have to offer. She has shown the American people this. Um, those that want to, you know, be the opposite to that, that's on them. Um, but I believe that if Donald Trump gets in, we're going to have four years of him trying to undo a mess that he possibly will never be able to undo. It's too big. Um, and then hopefully uh, J.D. Vance, if all goes well, will follow on from that. And he'll have a chance because they'll have the, the momentum behind them then. Um, but after that, I don't know how the world's going to end up. I'm Dr. J.W. Morrison, Theologist, Central Coast, New South Wales, Australia. Thank you for joining me and bye for now.